All right, this is section 712A. So I actually split this section into two parts. We're going to examine the remaining two properties of logarithms, and we're going to use those to be able to expand and condense logarithms together. So this is the next key that we need to be able to solve logarithmic equations. So the first is the product rule. Now this product rule says that if you're ever multiplying two values inside of a logarithm, so these are inside, if you're ever multiplying two values inside of a logarithm, you can break it into two different logs, two different logs with each of its factors inside of it. So M, N. Now you're going to see why this is going to be important here in a second because it's going to allow us to be able to simplify things. So log base 3 of 9 times 27. So using this rule, right, I can break this apart into two different logs because I have two factors. Log base 3 of 9, log base 3 of 27. Now after you expand it, if you're able to like simplify it or do anything else, do it. Well, 9 is the same as 3 squared. 27 is the same as 3 to the third. The log base 3 and the 3 reduce. The log base 3 and the 3 reduce. So I'm left with 2 plus, five, or two plus 3, which equals 5. Now, where does this come from? Now, remember, we're, we're thinking in terms of inverses. And so if you remember when we multiply two values with the same base, Remember how we add the exponents together? Well, that property, its inverse, manifests this way. So that is the reason why when I'm multiplying, we add two different logs. When we're multiplying, we add the exponents. When we're multiplying, we can write it as a summation of two different logs. Now we also have the quotient rule. and if you kind of think it back to exponents, if we were dividing, what do we do with the exponents? Well, we subtract. So if we're dividing two values inside of a logarithm, I can express it as subtraction. So if I wanted to express this as a difference of logarithms, I could say the top minus the bottom. So the top minus the bottom. And if there's any way that we can simplify that further, we can do that. Now there is one little thing that you should note. If it's in the numerator, it means that it's addition. If it's in the denominator, we could express it as subtraction. So numerator, positive, denominator, negative. And you're going to see that here in a second. So we're going to verify that. So if I wanted to express this as a single logarithm, positive, so I know that this is going to go into the numerator, negative, so I know that this is going to go into the denominator. Now when I express it as a single logarithm, I'm only going to write log once. And so there it is. I write the log once. And then it's the 64 in the numerator, the 16 in the denominator. Well, 16 over six, 64 over 16 reduce. And so I get log base b of 4. Now, there are some common errors. And I want you guys to go ahead and read through this. One thing to note, log base e does equal ln. But when we express it as when it's multiplication, it doesn't mean we're multiplying two logarithms together. Right, We're adding the two logarithms together. This is not distributive property. You can't distribute a log like that. It doesn't make any sense. This is one thing. It's not two separate things. It's not log base a times n, m plus n. So there's no distribution. Same thing with division, right? This doesn't distribute top and bottom like that. You uh, Dividing two logs is not the same thing as dividing its factors like that. And the other thing is remember yesterday when we talked about the power rule, right? If I had log uh, x to the fifth, I could take that 5 and move it to the front. 
this is inside the logarithm. Well, if it said log x to the fifth, saying that I have five of those log, log x's, you cannot move it to the front. So it only works when the exponent is in the inside of the logarithm and it's usually attached to whatever the factor is. That is the only time you're able to bring it to the front. All right, so now let's actually work with this. So we're going to express these as sum and differences. So we're going to expand these out. And so if you remember that shortcut that I said, I said things like if we see it on top, it's going to be adding. If it's in the bottom, it's going to be subtraction. But if you're able to reduce things first, reduce it. So look at here. Right? That reduces. Two x's on the top and two x's on the bottom, they're going to reduce. And so I only have two x's on the bottom. And so now I can expand that. This is the top. It's going to be positive. It's in the bottom. It's going to be negative. So I'm going to break it apart into different logarithms. So I have those two values there. Log base a of y to the fifth minus log base a of x squared. It's in the top. That's why it's positive. It's in the bottom. That's why it's negative. Now forever, now using the, the property from yesterday, the power rule, I can now take that 5 and I can move it to the front. I can take that square and move it to the front because the 5 is with the y. The square is with the x. And so I have fully expanded my logarithm. That right there is going to be my answer. So look at another one. Now sometimes we're going to get roots, and roots are ugh, ugly, right? Well, we have to think of it as a fractional exponent. And so by doing so, I could rewrite that as 1 third. And so because that's going to be 1 third, that 1 third can go with every single one of these. Right? Because we multiply them. That was the trick that we learned. Or I can just move it to the front. I can just do the power roll and be like, boop, move it right to the front. Don't even have to worry about it then. So now, I know you guys were thinking, like, well, I can go ahead and do that. Now, there's two ways to go about this. That's fine. If you wanted to multiply the, two, the one third through, I just moved it to the front. But that also means because I moved it to the front, I'm going to multiply this one third eventually with everything. And you're going to see that in a second. But now I have a squared and a b on the top, and then I have a c to the fifth on the bottom. So positive, positive, minus. So see, it's a positive log base a, a squared, positive log base a of b, and then because that's in the numerator, negative log base a of c to the fifth. Now if things cancel out, you can cancel them out, but those exponents we can also move to the front. So the log base a and the a cancel out. Right, just like it said log base 4 and 4. And so reducing that, I only have 2. And so now I can multiply that 1 third through. I can move that 5 to the front. And so moving that 5 to the front here now, okay, I multiply the 1 third through. Moving that 5 to the front, that's going to be 1 third times 5. So I, that's how I get the minus 5 thirds. It's been fully expanded. That's my answer. Let's do another one. Here we go. We're going to expand this out. So there's nothing that's going to reduce. So this is in the numerator. This is in the numerator. They're positive. This is in the denominator. This is in the denominator. So it's going to be negative. And so log base b of a plus log base b of y to the fifth. These are in the bottom. So they're both going to be minus, minus, minus. So minus log base b of n to the third minus log base b of n to the fourth. I know you're thinking, like, well, when I'm multiplying these, why, why are, why isn't that going to be a positive? They're in the, we're comparing this to this. So technically, I'm dividing both of these, and so because these are both being divided, that's why you express them as a negative. And so now I can take any exponents that you have and we can move them to the front. And so that's going to be my answer. So now, let's go in the reverse order. So now we're going to, instead of you know, taking your condensed form and expanding it, 
we're going to take our expanded form and condense it. So we're going to take this 5. We're first going to bring it up to the exponent. We're going to take this 1 fourth, and we're going to bring it up as an exponent. Then we recognize what's going to be positive and what's going to be negative. And so positive, positive, so that means these values here are going to be in the numerator. This is a negative, so I know that this is going to be in the denominator. And so I have my x to the fifth, z to the one-fourth, and my y in the denominator. Now, here's where when we start condensing things, this is where it gets really, really weird. We have this tendency to write log more than once. Stop. When you condense, you're only writing log once. I condensed this into one logarithm. This is not log base b of x to the fifth, z to the one fourth over log base b of y. Okay? So you condense it into only one logarithm. And I can, instead of writing it as z to the one fourth, you can write that as a fourth root. You don't have to. I don't care either way, but just know you can do it. Now this one, ln, right? We said ln is the same as log base e. That's how we, whenever we see ln, we need to be thinking log base e. That's the same as ln. It's another type of common log where, you know, it's in our calculator, we can use it, et cetera, et cetera. So positive numerator, negative denominator, one ln, so one of these lns, and it's this on top divided by, and then this on the bottom. Now sometimes we can reduce it from here. So for example, it may not look like it, but I can actually factor that using your little Xbox method, or however it is that you factor. And so that's what it's going to factor into. This right here, using this, or this right here, using this, will factor into this. And now that the x plus one, or three x plus ones cancel out, there's only a one left on top, so I get one over x minus two. So just know that after you condense it, you may be able to simplify it some more. All right, here's some practice. So what I want you guys to do is uh, just go ahead and pause it, practice it, and then I'm just going to show the answers. All right, so here are the answers. Take a look at it. The one, this one probably is self-explanatory, but this one right here, this is minus and this is minus, and so that's why they're in the denominator. And then that square moves up there, and so that's why it's y squared. Remember, I only write one log. You don't write it more than once. So what did we learn today? We learned the different properties of logarithms. We talked about the product rule and the quotient rule and how to expand and condense logarithms together. So what can you do when you multiply two values inside a log? You can expand it and write it as two different logs or three or four depending on how many factors you're multiplying and you write it as addition. What can you do when you divide two values inside of a log? Well, you write them as subtraction. Whatever is in the denominator will represent a negative. This does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.